When you hear the term Wild West, images of dusty streets with gunslingers and cowboys roaming the range come to mind. However, set aside your preconceived notions about the Old West. The craziest, strangest, and most bizarre things that have ever happened in those frontier settlements are going to be examined. Come along with us as we examine the top 10 strange events that happened in the Wild West. Number one, one man two graves. The one and only Jesse James is the subject of this tale. This man was so well known that even after he retired from his days of robbing banks and resided in Kearney, Missouri, his former foes were unable to forget him. In an effort to deter would-be grave robbers, Jesse's family decided to bury him in his front yard following his sad murder. However, as time went on and his adversaries began to pass away, his family made the decision to bury the poor man honorably in a Kearney cemetery. But this is when the intriguing part starts. There is a grave near Granbury, Texas, where Jesse James is buried, and many have been asking who the hell is buried there. I can tell you that it's none other than J. Frank Dalton, who appeared at the ripe old age of 101 in 1948 and declared himself to be the actual Jesse James. Even allowing him to legally take on the bandit's name, the court granted him this. It's unbelievable, right? It's unknown why Dalton took such a risk, or whether he was connected to Jesse James. Indeed, it's a tale worth telling. The genuine Jesse James, on the other hand, is interred in Kearney's Mount Alls Cemetery, according to DNA tests. To be honest, though, Jesse James was enormous, so enormous that his body needed two graves. Number two, Gettysburg of the West. One day, Confederate General Henry Hopkins SBLI had an epiphany. He wanted to undermine Northern political unity and ease pressure on the Confederate soldiers in the East. But in Union General Samuel Curtis, he faced a formidable foe. In September 1864, Price began his invasion of Missouri with the goal of compelling the Union to commit additional forces to the Western theater. Price's raids at Pilot Knob in Jefferson City ran into fierce Union opposition. He therefore devised a strategy to march up into Colorado from New Mexico territory. He had no idea, though, that the 1st Volunteer Regiment in Colorado had his number. After learning of the plan, the Yankees marched 400 miles south in 13 days to join the Union forces at Fort Union, which is close to Santa Fe. Their journey would not be as simple as they had anticipated. After two days of skirmishing, the Union troops, likely with the help of nearby ranchers and guides, outflanked the Confederates and destroyed their supply line. It was a typical example of putting too much stock in your opponent. Many historians refer to the battle SIP soldiers waged as the Gettysburg of the West. On October 21, 1864, the Union forces established a defensive line at the Blue River to halt Price's advance westward toward Leavenworth. However, on October 22, R's 9,000-strong army forced the Union garrison to flee when it crossed the Blue River at Byram Ford, close to modern-day Slope Park. Curtis established a new defensive line just south of Westport, along the south side of Brush Creek, but Price was unfazed. He drove Curtis's forces north to what is now known as Country Club Plaza, across Brush Creek. The short Confederate assault came to an end when General Alfred Pleasanton's Union Cavalry Brigade arrived from the east, increasing the size of the Union forces to over 20,000 soldiers. The following day marked the conclusion of the terrible Westport battle. About 1,500 troops were lost on both sides, which had a greater negative impact on the smaller Confederate force. Price's army was overtaken by Pleasant's cavalry near Mine Creek in Kansas's Lynn County. In one of the biggest cavalry engagements of the war, which took place on October 25th, the Confederates suffered another 1,200 casualties, captures, or deaths. The hard reality that they were outnumbered and outwitted had to be faced by Price's defeated army of roughly 6,000 soldiers. They had to retire to Texas with their tails between their legs after that, and they never came back. 
and that put a stop to it. Number three, train robbery. The Wild West trains weren't the only places that thieves targeted though. Banks were also targeted. When they executed the first rail heist, the Reno gang was ahead. The group was chasing cash, jewelry, and other valuables in 1866. When they forced the courier to open one of the safes aboard a train, they stole $18,000 in cash and other goods. However, as they say, go big or go home. There was just one issue that stood in the way of the Reno gang's plans to unlock the large safe, and they required the key. So, in a stroke of inspiration, they stole the safe off the train with the intention of returning for it later. Sadly, they had to leave it behind because it was too heavy. After a few years, the Reno gang was apprehended by the authorities, and six of its members were executed by hanging from a tree near what is now known as Hangman Crossing. In Seymour, Indiana, they were laid to rest. You can also visit their graves, which are hidden behind a little gate if you're ever in the vicinity. Number four, terrible whiskey. Imagine entering a dusty saloon in the American West after a tiring day and feeling like the greatest cowboy alive. After settling into a bar stool, you order the best whiskey the barman has to offer and take a sip, only to regret your choice right away. This thing tastes like gasoline, despite the bottle's claim that it comes from Kentucky and has been aged for 10 years. Copyright laws didn't exist back then, and since you were out on the frontier, no one gave a damn. To enhance earnings, it's possible that a significant portion of the whiskey sold was diluted with water or other alcohol. Furthermore, a portion of those purported bourbons were made by distilling inferior molasses. Serious Eats claims that the names of the whiskies that were popular at the time were also strange. You didn't exactly have a lot of confidence because you had coffin varnish. Then there's the Mountain Howitzer, which resembles a projectile fired from a cannon. It even gets strange, though. This alcohol was so potent that it would tangle your legs as you tried to leave the bar, which is why there is a twisted leg. That's a stiff cocktail, if you will. Number five. Cowboys didn't wear 10-gallon hats. Everyone was wearing the boss of the plains, a flat-brimmed Stetson back then. Put an end to the enormous 10-gallon hats you see in movies. Such didn't exist until Hollywood began elevating cowboys in the 1920s. For cowboys, ranchers, farmers, and anybody else who spent time outside, the boss was the go-to hat. The hat was sturdy, water-resistant, and lightweight for a good cause. Furthermore, the interior was sufficiently insulated to serve as a water bucket for your reliable horse. The broad brim shielded your neck from burns and prevented the sun from shining in your eyes. John Stetson, the man who invented the Stetson, saw that the hats people wore on airplanes had to be made of straw, silk fur, and wool, since the other materials would get too hot in the summer or too wet in the rain. So he came up with the ideal fix. Though it may not seem like much, the $4.50 that these hats originally retailed for is equivalent to almost $74 in modern currency. Additionally, Nutria fur, a luxury material, was used in their creation. Number six, the gold rush. You may believe that the 1849 gold rush in California was the greatest gold rush ever, but be aware that this wasn't even America's first or second gold rush. In North Carolina's Cavers County, it all began in 1799. A small boy named Conrad Reed found a large golden pebble in his father's field one day. At first, they were unsure of what it was. It's likely that they mistook it for a large chunk of ornate gravel. They therefore utilized it as a doorstop for a few years until a posh jeweler arrived in town and identified it as the 17 gold nugget that it was. You can imagine the outcome that followed. Digging, panning, and generally looking all over for more sweet gold, people began. In order to keep up with the amount of gold being extracted from North Carolina's ground, Congress even had to construct the Charlotte Mint. Then, in 1828, gold was found in Georgia, sparking the second gold rush in American history, which didn't end until 1848. 
It was in Sutter's Mill in California that old James Marshall struck it lucky. The true celebration began when tens of thousands of well-known 49ers traveled to California in an attempt to follow their dreams of becoming wealthy. Hence, although the California Gold Rush of 1849 is the most well-known, it wasn't the first or the final time that Americans were obsessed with gold. Number 7. The OK Corral Shootout Folks, buckle in, because I'm about to transport you back to the days of the Wild West, when shootouts were common, firearms were lawful, and men were. We are discussing the fabled gunfight involving the McClory brothers, Doc Holliday and Billy Claiborne Clanton. With eight guys participating, this firefight had to have been an amazing fight to remember. Nope, it was over in 30 seconds. That's hardly enough time for a good video on TikTok, not to mention a full-fledged gunfight. And Corral, the entire event, happened in a place that wasn't even acceptable. In Tombstone, Arizona, it took place in the vicinity of 3rd Street and Fremont Street behind the Corral. Even though the gunfight was short, there was still a lot of bloodshed. Three of the cowboys were killed and three law enforcement officials were hurt. So who fired first? You query? That's a mystery then. Everyone is aware that Wyatt killed Frank with a shot to the gut. Holiday fired a shotgun at Tom and Virgil shot Clanton. Clanton and Claiborne fled with their tails between their legs, escaping unharmed, following all of that. Thus, as you can see, there wasn't really much of a shootout. Naturally, things didn't stop there. In actuality, Holiday and the Herbs were on trial for murder. People started to side with the Cowboys, the Earps, and Holiday, and the whole thing became a disaster. The judge ultimately decided in favor of the vacationing Earp family, and they were able to leave as free as a bird. Number 8. Dead Outlaws Posing for Photographs Some people think that outlaws pose for pictures. It may seem graphic, but during the time when outlaws dominated the Wild West, local newspapers carried a wealth of intriguing tales about their adventures. Of course, there was some hyperbole involved, just like in any good story. To make matters even more fascinating, those books and papers had a penchant for embellishing the truth, but the villagers demanded documentation. The authorities sought to send a message to any other would-be lawbreakers when those outlaws met their untimely and glorious end. That's where photography entered the picture. The 19th century saw the development of photography, which truly changed everything. There was now a means of obtaining a last photo of those deceased outlaws before their six-foot burial. Occasionally, the entire group would be gathered for a final group portrait, while other times it would just be a pair, perhaps resembling a couple of eerie dead dolls. However, it was constructed from enduring images that both queried the town's residents' curiosity and enabled the authorities to convey a clear message. Observe these deceased criminals. It appears that this is what occurs when you try to manipulate us. Thus, if you're considering breaking the law in this community, give it some serious thought. Number 9. Feral Camels Roaming the Plains of Texas in 1855, the Secretary of War at the time, Jefferson Davis, persuaded Congress to invest $30,000 in bringing drones and camels into Afghanistan for military use. With the Transcontinental Railroad still years away, Davis reasoned that the animals would be valuable for delivering supplies to isolated outposts in the West. As a result, the U.S. Army went on a buying binge and bought 75 camels from the Middle East and Mediterranean. Initially, the camels were kept at Camp Verde in Texas, where their purpose was to transport supplies to San Antonio. Some were employed in Texas, where they were put to service on tiny pack trains that traveled to Fort Bowie and El Paso. Expeditions were dispatched in 1862 to explore the Mexican border for uncharted territory. Sadly, the Mool Lobby's objections to the exotic animal's competitiveness led Congress to reject plans to buy more camels. The American Civil War eventually started. After Texas broke away from the Union, Confederate forces seized control of Camp Verde and its camel herds. Following their release to graze, some of the camels ventured out on their own. Three were taken prisoner, 
by Union soldiers and were sold at an auction in Iowa in 1863. The Confederate Post Office Department used some of them, while others made their way into Mexico. Number 10. Armed Bank Robbery Unbelievably, bank robberies did not originate in the Wild West. Thirty years before the Wild West era in 1831, the first one was carried out without the use of guns by thieves. They simply helped themselves and waltzed in with a set of falsified keys. However, as all things come to pass, the first bank heist that had nothing to do with the war took place in Malden, Massachusetts in 1863. Everything started at midday when the 32-year-old postmaster of Edward Green Malden came into the Malden Bank, asking for some change. Green was somewhat of a hedonist and carried a heavy debt load. But on December 15, 1863, he walked into that bank and saw an opportunity to solve all of his issues. Unfortunately for him, the only person employed at the time was a 17-year-old boy who also happened to be the son of the bank president. Though he was out of pocket, Green wasn't finished yet. After stumbling back home, he reached for his reliable gun and executed his gruesome deed by shooting the child in the head. Green took $5,000 in cash with him. Even though it might not seem like much now, that was more than $105,000 in 1863. No one was unaware of his unexpected cash windfall, of course. When the postmaster, who had previously been in debt, appeared to have plenty of money, people began to become suspicious. Well, less than a month later, Green admitted to the entire affair. But there's still more. It wasn't just any regular bank heist that Green committed. He had to go and create history. Oh no. He was the first person in American history to be hanged for armed bank robbery. In fact, the Library of Congress still has the film footage from the procession. These are our top 10 odd occurrences in the wild, wild west. Which of these would have been amazing to see? Post your ideas in the comments area.